and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Hamilton House Ecto Lager. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are going to be doing something a little different. We're going to tackle a whole bunch of movies all at once. The Psycho sequels. We're going to start with Psycho 2, directed by Richard Franklin. He directed Road Games. You can see the Hitchcock connection there already. Dennis Franz is in this and uh, he was in NYPD Blue. She cried and she died! <laughs> 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 and he was in The Simpsons as well. Well, yeah. time to get me some sweet. <laughs> this is 22 years later now, and Norman is getting released. Deemed sane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of people in the courtroom protesting this. He first goes back to his old life, basically, to the motel and to his yeah. house. Yeah. Dennis Franz's character, Mr. Toomey, he's running the hotel, and he's kind of turned it into like a fucking brothel almost. Yeah. You're fired. I want you out by tomorrow. Yeah. What about all those families? Huh? They were murdered by you, you loony! <laughs> Part of the conditions for his release is that he's got to get a job. Here we get introduced to Meg Tilly's character, Mary. She starts to have like kind of boyfriend problems. So Norman says, well, you can come stay at the house. Looking at the orders because he's kind of like the line cook and gets a letter that's from his mom. Mr. <laughs> Toomey shows up. How was he in bed, huh? Yeah. He's <laughs> <laughs> There's like a little altercation, he gets kind of tense and, and he starts getting like phone calls from his mother. Which is strange. Yeah. Because she's dead. People are being killed off. Now the police are getting involved. Big question of whether Norman was cured in the first place from his insanity, whether he's going insane again, or whether he is actually maybe being framed by somebody. That's one of the greatest hallmarks of this movie, is the misdirection. It's more of a murder mystery. It's a very smart continuation of the first movie. It's not a cookie cutter psycho one again. A lot of issues like insanity, someone actually ever cured of that. A lot how, of moral issues. Yeah, right? how to treat somebody when they've been released back into society. Do they deserve to be treated like garbage? Should you let them live their own life? Or should they be released at all? Yeah. Right? It deals with all that kind of stuff. Is Norman the crazy one here? Or is he the sanest person in the whole movie? Yeah. And everyone else movie. is a little nuts because just him being in the town has made people kind of go yeah. a little nuts. Yeah. Right? And the ending of this movie is a great payoff too. Like everything comes together, yeah. right? <laughs> Huge twist at the end. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Which brings us to part three, done in 1986. This one is directed by Anthony Perkins himself, which is kind of neat because he was skeptical of doing the second one, kind of convinced and he read the script and was like, okay, script is good, I'll do it. Now he's directing the third one, right? right. Yeah, kind of neat. Stars Jeff Fahey, and he is in lots of stuff, but we want to <laughs> mention Lawnmower Man. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't even start off with the Norman Bates storyline and that is with this nun and her, her name is Maureen and she's in this monastery questioning her faith a little bit and she's up in this tower with this other nun who actually ends up falling she kind of hits the bell on the way yeah, to yeah. <laughs> all this kind of makes her lose faith runs away from the monastery she's picked up by this kind of scuzzy musician guy who goes by the name Duke you're the Duke you are <laughs> Hey, number one. <laughs> comes on pretty strong to Maureen. She gets so freaked out where she actually runs out of the car in the storm. But you could have been coming instead of going. <laughs> Ends up actually at the Bates Motel now. Bates Motel is looking for a new manager role because we all know from the second one, Mr. Toomey is no longer alive. <laughs> and now we've met Norman. He's stuffed himself a new mother. <laughs> right? <laughs> Fucking yeah. cr creepy on a, such a different level. Maureen actually ends up now at the Bates Motel too. She's walked all this way just mm. on foot. Norman sees her and is kind of taken by her a bit. It opens up the shower curtain and you think he's going to kill her and complete twist. She's laying there in the tub with her wrist slit. Norman actually saves her. He takes her to the hospital. Norman and Maureen actually kind of start to fall in love. The police are investigating the old woman who's missing from the second movie. Football after party that happens at the hotel, and he ends up killing one of the girls. Pretty cool, too, I might yeah. add. She's on the toilet and yeah. ding, slits her throat. Yeah. 
he eventually has had enough with this manager of his. Duke! And they kind of duke it out. Too. Duke it out. <laughs> yeah. He throws an ashtray at his head, and then he, <laughs> like, hits him in the head with a lamp. He drags him to the car, and he starts to drive the car into the creek. But he's still not dead! He wakes up, and so he... Takes him into the front seat and puts his leg on his neck. Yeah. And he drives the car right in. And Maureen is starting to get a little more worried about him, too. He's starting to close himself off a lot more. And he's starting to spend a lot more time in his mother's room. All this stuff and the cops culminate into everything sort of closing in around him. That's where we're going to end it. If you want to see what happens with Norman and with all the characters that are surrounding his new life, yeah. <laughs> keep watching. So, Psycho 3, another great sequel in the Psycho series. Yeah. The characters are really good. Yeah, they're very colorful. Yeah, honestly. very colorful and defined. <laughs> that scene with Duke, and he's all naked with those lamps. <laughs> He's all serious, too. <laughs> if you wanted to see Norman kind of get back into things, yeah. into the old swing of things, this is the movie to do it. Another cool thing about the characters, too, is all of them, in their own way, are almost just as nuts as Norman Bates is. It takes place, like I think, pretty much right after the second movie. Yeah. And right. a lot of these same actors are even in it, but a different atmosphere than the second. It's got more of like an 80s slasher atmosphere without falling in that cookie cutter template. Yeah, and it doesn't get jokey either. Yeah. The atmosphere is fantastic. A lot of actually legitimately creepy moments in the movie. Yeah, so if you're looking for a good continuation to the story, it's great, it's perfect. Psycho 4 came out in 1990 and it was actually a made for TV movie. Yeah. It's directed by Mick Garris. He did the made for TV version of The Stand and the made-for-TV remake of The Shining. Warren Forrest is in this, and he was uh, Susan's dad in Seinfeld. They're all chickens. The rooster has sex with all of them. <laughs> That's perverse. <laughs> Olivia Hussey is in this. Hussey? 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 Hussey. She was in Black Christmas, and uh, she was in the made-for-TV version of It. Psycho 4 is completely different than every other Psycho movie that came before it. It starts off with a talk show, a radio talk show. Everyone's all smoking. Yes, yeah, super <laughs> smoking. Like typical, like before you ban smoking inside, the whole place is full of smoke. <laughs> They're talking about matricide. Norman Bates decides to call in and give his little story and opinion on matricide. <laughs> they don't know that he is Norman Bates. He hasn't said who he is. So Norman starts to talk about his past and we learn pretty much what turned him into a killer. The death of his dad, we don't know how it happened, whether it was on purpose, by accident. <laughs> At his dad's funeral, sitting there all sad next to his mom, his mom looks kind of sad, I guess. And she starts <laughs> tickling Norman, and he starts laughing, and then she proceeds to get mad at him for it. There's a lot of the same contradictory stuff that his mother does to him. She also, as a punishment, dresses him as a woman, too, yeah. right? She'll tell Norman that, you know, girls are bad, girls are diseased, uh, sex is no good, and all that stuff, yet she'll be bringing men home. Oh, this kind of culminates into, like, his first kill. It goes to strangle her and everything, and puts her in the trunk of the car thinking that she's dead, and she's actually not dead. Yeah. Throws her back in and, like, drive the car into the creek. You still hear the trunk banging, right? And so he didn't even finish the job properly. Yeah. She ends up having a guy coming and living with her, tries to make Norman, I guess, into a man, punches him in the stomach, and sort of demeans him, right? She humiliates and, yeah, him. Yeah, humiliates him. Makes him into their personal slave, almost, bringing them iced tea and all this After shit. After they just finished having <laughs> sex. He does end up getting back at his mother and that fucking sleazy ass boyfriend yeah. putting poison in their iced tea ends up stuffing her it comes back to this main talk show thing with norman telling the story he's gonna kill somebody in the present yeah soon now should they try and stop norman should they find out where he's living yeah to try and stop him, call the cops, keep him talking. Yeah, so if you want to see what happens, keep watching Cycle 4. It's actually yeah. a really cool ending. Yeah, it is. Very original on its own, Yeah. right? There aren't any other movies really like this. A sequel and a prequel at the same time. That's right. 
and it does both justice. The format's really cool too, the talk show format. The basically. flashbacks aren't even in chronological order, which I think is neat. It makes Norman into a real person. You also sympathize with him too, yeah. right? Yeah. And a lot of times you're not supposed to, you shouldn't, yeah. Yeah. but you do because you see what he went through and what made him into this yeah. killer. I really love Anthony Perkins, puts it all on the line, and, and young Norman. He plays a good innocent kid, yeah. you know, yeah. that's still being molded. <laughs> Olivia Hussey is really good. Hussey? Hussey? Ah. <laughs> she's really great in this. You like, you kind of feel sorry for her because you know she's nuts, but yeah. at the same time, like, you are a bitch. Yeah. One of the better beginning prequel type horror movies, I think. Mm -hmm. So there you go, there is the Psycho sequels, two, three, and four. I can't think of any other real horror franchise where all the sequels are pretty damn good and they're all completely different from each other. And they all do the character justice too, yeah. right? To a yeah. T. All intelligent movies. Yeah. And they all keep you captivated too, right? Yeah. You want to keep watching. I might be going out on the limb saying this, but I think they're probably the best sequels. The two, three, and four in a row I think being they're the that best. good. They're probably the best. All back to back. Yeah, you can't really beat them. And it ends at part four. Where it should. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't keep going yeah. and like turning him yeah. into some monster. Yeah. And... <laughs> well, we can thank uh, you know, Anthony Perkins for dying for that. You know, <laughs> if you haven't seen him, please watch him. And until next time, keep drinking. <laughs>